Today's health topic, increasing brain power. How many of us need more brain power? I'm sure every single one of you at some point in the day thinks, oh, I'm gonna grab that cup of coffee. Are there other ways, natural ways, ongoing ways, that you can help your brain function better? Dr. Trudy Pieper from Phoenix Wellness Center joins us again this week to talk about that very topic. How's your brain doing? Is it rearing and ready to go? It always is. I'm drinking my green tea like crazy. <laughs> I've had my coconut oil this morning. I'm ready to give some good thought and information today. All right, so share with us some of your nuggets, golden nuggets on how we can improve our brain functioning. You know, I think that if we just focus on the fact that there's lots of things in our home that we can do and we just have to be intentional. It doesn't happen. If you want to increase your brain power, you can do that, but you have to make some lifestyle choices to make that happen. There's three easy things and it's going to be black tea, ginger, and coconut oil. Um, most are readily available. If you're not used to coconut oil, it may be something you're going to run out the store and get after we finish talking mm -hmm. here today. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is black tea. We know that our IQ uh, stays the same, you know, once we test, are tested for that. However, once you be, have dementia and, and Alzheimer's, your IQ lessens. You, it's just not as powerful, the number isn't as high, you can't function as well. So if you want to maintain that IQ, you also want to increase your focus and your attention, you need to be drinking black tea every day. The Journal of Nutritional and Neuroscience uh, founds that it helps prote protect our intelligence level. It is, and we often think about black tea of having caffeine and mm -hmm. causing jitters, and maybe we can't think. The, the truth of that is it contains something called tannins, mm. which will lessen the jitters, and L-theanine. And L-theanine is a wonderful calming uh, agent that helps with our neurotransmitters to allow us to have a calmer brain and allow signals to jump across the synapses in our brain. Mm. So L-theanine is in the black tea. Uh, studies have found that if you drink black tea uh, within 20 minutes, you will have, uh, you'll do better on cognitive testing. Wow. So you're in college, you're getting ready for finals, you need to be drinking black tea before you're testing to Un make sure. Unsweetened. Unsweetened. Now, you can put a little honey in that uh, or a little stevia, some natural vegetable sweetener, if you have to do that because honey is a natural antibiotic and I'm always concerned about people's immune system. So a little honey would be okay, but obviously without it is best. <laughs> All right, black tea, that's your number one item that you want to add to your list for your brain function to improve. Next one is? Ginger. Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it helps with your working memory um, and your reaction time. There was this two-month study with, that was done in the Journal of Pharmacy and Pharmacology, and it found that ginger has an ingredient called gingerol and it ups the flow of blood and oxygen into the brain. It calms stressed adrenals. It protects the blood-brain barrier, and it will al allow you to respond quicker. So you sometimes you have a hard time finding that word, mm -hmm. and you're thinking about what it is I need to do next, or my mm -hmm. foggy thinking, I don't know what direction to go. If you're using ginger every day, that will eliminate those problems. It's best to use fresh ginger, and you peel the bark off of it and you grate a little bit off. You need one teaspoon of grated ginger a day will improve your, your thought process, your foggy thinking, and your memory. You can and be creative with that. You can put it in tea, make a tea out of it. Um, I like to put it with my salads in my salad mm. dressing, a little zip to the dressing, um, in yogurt, sprinkle on some fruit. Um, ginger can be used anyway. And of course, we're talking about, you find it in your produce section. A lot of times it's next to where the fresh herbs will be found. It, 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 it looks like a, well, it comes in all shapes and sizes. It does. You're gonna buy Each this funny looking. brown, funny looking. Root. Yes, it's a root. It's a root. Take it home, and like she said, you take off the peel, and, that, and you, can, you can use that inside. Right. If that sounds like too much work, you can buy the ginger powder, and you can use that instead but we always know fresher is better mm -hmm. and you get more of the insides and ingredients in the fresh ginger root. Oh, and once you, you uh, even cutting it, just the aroma that good. comes out. Wow, yes, I'm a ginger fan, I can tell you that. Coconut oil is another fan, I'm another fan of that too. Coconut oil can be used in so many ways. It can, it's a good uh, omega-3s. We talk a lot about the essential fatty acids and help to give your brain, but it re improves recall. 
The Journal of Neurology and Aging found that just a single dose will help your recall ability. Mm. Um, again, we think about things and we can't remember what it was we were trying to say. Uh, it improves the memory of patients with dementia and Alzheimer's within 90 minutes. Mm. So they did cognitive testing with dementia and Alzheimer patients. They gave them uh, one to three teaspoons of the coconut oil, uh, mixed it in some coffee, put it in, um, or just gave it to them straight, and they found that uh, they responded within 90 minutes, they had better testing hmm. uh, after, after taking the coconut oil. It provides healthy fats, something called MCTSs, which are fast acting, and will get into the brain. Um, they're really readily absorbed. It takes one to three teaspoons a day. Of the unrefined, Okay. The I'm one refined. that looks like lard. Now mm. that ages me. Not a lot of people don't even know what lard <laughs> looks like, but it's white and chunky. Um, that's the one, the form that is the best form that'll use to improve your memory. You, I like to spread it on my toast instead of butter. Um, you can add in your smoothies, uh, put it in your tea. So there, if you put it in your black tea, then you have a double dose. You get to have two Perfect. ways of improving your mind and your memory. And where should people look? Where should they go to find this unrefined coconut oil? It, obviously, it's at health food stores, but even the major grocery stores, Chief and Kroger, all have it in their health food section. And it comes usually in a glass jar, and again, it's, it's the thickened white uh, form is the one that you want. Okay. Now, why, why are we even having to have these conversations? Why are we Americans in such dire need of these types of things added to our diets? Well, in, in America, we think we're such a healthy nation with a great health care system. And we, there were just recent statistics that came out and to show that we are not. Um, we are number 34 as far as healthiest nations in the world. Number 34. 34. Number 34. Number one is Italy. Yes. Number two is Iceland. Switzerland, Singapore, and Australia are the top five. But yes, United States, number 34, and pretty up there in the world of obesity, too. It's huge. Um, we're always surprised with that. No, the number that we're really good at, Jennifer, is c cost. Hmm. We, we spend more for health care in the United States than any other country in the world, hmm. probably by almost three times as much. Wow. The uh, per capita cost is around $10,000 per person. For us in the United States. In the United States. Whereas in Italy, which is the healthiest nation, um, they spend 3000 a year. So it's, it's a huge difference of what it is. Um, obviously, I think from my perspective that we need to revamp and relook at how we're doing things that maybe uh, all of the prescription drugs in lieu of herbs and lifestyle changes and may not be the way to go. Um, that herbs is the main a medical system for 80% of the world. 80% of the world only uses herbs and lifestyle mm -hmm. changes, not drugs. So we're pretty much the primary user of the drugs in our country. The $3.3 trillion a year are spent in the United States on health care. The majority of that goes to hospitals, next to doctors, and then finally to the, the pharmaceutical companies. Wow. So um, it's things that uh, we can change. Uh, one of the things I think, okay, now why do we think that Italy has such a great health system. What are they doing different than we're doing? What do you think? Well, they uh, they live closer to the water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at least for at least closer than we do here in Ohio. And because of that, they eat more fish. Uh, and fish has essential fatty acids, which we mention a lot, um, are great for the brain. But they have the Mediterranean mm. um, diet, which is based upon the Medi Mediterranean Sea, and with that diet, which is also the diet that the Arthritis Foundation recommends for, for arthritis, arthritis people, particularly rheumatoid arthritis, if you follow the Mediterranean diet, that you will have less symptoms with your RA. But the big difference there is when we look at on the daily schedule of what you eat in the Mediterranean diet, you eat three fruits a day and you eat three cups of vegetables a day. Mm -hmm. Now three cups, knowing that a half cup is a serving, would be actually six servings of vegetables and three servings of fruits. So you're getting nine servings of fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. every day. The average American does one serving mm -hmm. of either fruits or vegetables each day. Wow. So that makes a huge difference right there why they're number one and we are not. They also put a lot of uh, emphasis on olive oil they have olive oil with two of their meals. 
So either it's on a salad or they stir fry their vegetables in it, they cook only with the olive oil. And olive oil, besides being an essential fatty acid, also helps the liver and the gallbladder to work better. So now they're eliminating excess estrogens. They're uh, making the liver being able to purify the blood more quickly. Um, so the olive oil is another huge piece of that. They, the red meat's very limited. They do fish three to four times a week, and then otherwise they're doing poultry uh, with their meals. Lots of grains, and that's not the white bread that we eat, but the crusty uh, <laughs> seeds and multi-grain breads that gives you lots of fiber. They also consume one ounce of nuts or seeds every day. Mediterranean diet, you can look that up online and you can find all of those statistics that Dr. Trudy just mentioned. These lifestyle changes may feel major, especially if you think, oh, that's such a huge change. Well, let's start with just one. Let's start with one lifestyle change, little by little. And as you add that into your life, you can add one more. And before you know it, six months down the road, you may look back and not only feel better, but realize so many things in your life have improved, including your brain. You'll be able to think better as well. Dr. Trudy Pieper, as always, thank you so much for your knowledge. Appreciate you being with us here on Faith and Friends. You can find her at Phoenix Wellness Center in Johnstown. There's the phone number 740-616-9949 or online phoenixwellnessforyou.com.